All right, welcome back everybody. Today, uh, it's time to revisit my Project X series, the sort of non-conventional beers that are really fun to brew but have probably some wild results. Uh, so today, we're gonna be making a fruit beer, a blueberry wheat ale to be exact. So this is a beer that um, was kind of inspired by some outside input and uh, I might be brewing this for somebody, but it's still something that's fun for me. I made a ton of summer beers this summer and each of them is like, oh, this will be my last summer beer. Um, but I keep making them because I keep drinking them and giving them away. So I'm pretty sure this is gonna be my last summer beer. Um, but it'll be fun to make anyway. So it's a blueberry wheat ale, right? So uh, what we're actually doing today only is making a wheat ale. Uh, no sort of blueberry stuff is gonna go into it today. So the way that that's gonna work uh, you can either do some sort of uh, flavor extract, make your own tincture with like vodka and blueberries, or you can buy pre-made extract. Um, that's all well and good, but I want to try and do this the hard way. So I got some blueberry puree, uh, three pounds of it to be exact, arriving in the mail pretty soon. So once the primary stage of fermentation is done on this beer, we're going to go ahead and rack it onto the blueberry puree and then it'll actually re-ferment a little bit. It's gonna ferment out most of those sugars, but leave a good amount of blueberry flavor behind, hopefully, and maybe we'll get a cool color out of it. So, no idea, really, what's gonna happen with this beer. Um, I have no idea what to expect, but it'll be a lot of fun in the process, and uh, regardless of how it turns out, I'm gonna let you guys know. So anyway, here's the recipe uh, for today. It's just gonna be a simple wheat ale, okay? So, um, we're just using six pounds of American white wheat, four pounds of US two row and half a pound of carapils. And then for hops, it's just one ounce of Willamette uh, at 60 minutes, just a bitter, that's it. Uh, and then for yeast, Y yeast 1010, that's the American wheat. For water, um, I'm not looking at this too seriously, so uh, I just kind of grabbed a water profile that I used in a, in a Belgian beer a little while back uh, that worked out really well for me. So that's uh, 86 parts per million of calcium, 11 parts per million of magnesium, 65 parts per million of sodium, 130 parts per million of sulfate, 100 parts per million of chloride, 90 parts per million of carbonate. Uh, and in order to achieve that, I added 6 grams of gypsum, 2 grams of epsom, and 3 grams of calcium carbonate, aka chalk. So for mashing, we're going to mash this at a higher temperature, 154. Um, mainly because I kind of expect the fruit addition later on to dry the beer out pretty seriously. So I want to keep some residual sweetness in there to balance out any sort of unintended like tartness uh, from the berries sans sugar. Uh, so we're going to leave that at 154 um, and we'll do that for 90 minutes. So hopefully it's going to be a pretty fun and easy beer to brew. I'm heating up my strike water right now. Uh, it's got half a Camden tablet in it, so that's getting rid of any chloramines uh, from the water. And then I've added my brewing salts on top of that. So uh, shortly we should be able to mash in. Okay, so our strike water has reached the appropriate temperature. Uh, so it's time to pull out the heat stick and uh, start doing in the grains. All right, so my uh, thermometer that I always use um, has read its last temperature. So unfortunately that is gone. So I have to use my backup, which is, bear with me, this little meat thermometer here. So this is gonna be a very interesting approximation. Probably not super precise at all. Um, but hopefully it works because this is the only thermometer I have right now. I mean, if I'm reading this correctly, it says 154, maybe 155, so I'm going to call it. <laughs> I hope it is. All right, so it's about 10 minutes into the mash right now. So it's time to take a sample um, from the mash and check its pH, make sure we're more or less on target. All 
Okay, so it looks like it's somewhere between 5 and 5.5, uh, which is where we want to be. So I'm not going to dust anything in the mash and it should be fine. Alright, ending the mash, looks like we're at about 150 degrees, um, more or less, very much approximate with this thermometer, um, but that's, that's fine, just gonna go ahead and uh, start draining things out now. Okay, so we got about six and a half gallons uh, from our first runnings. So our pre-boil volume is eight gallons. So for my second runnings, I'm gonna go ahead and add about a gallon and a half of water to the boil kettle and let it do its thing. Uh, let it sit for like another 20 minutes and then we'll um, drain out the rest of the second runnings and then top up our boil kettle. All right, so now you can tell the boil's begun. Um, so given this is a wheat beer, it's not a very clear, clean beer uh, by style. So I'm not going to uh, worry about adding things like whirl flock or other clarifying agents. Um, and I'm not even gonna worry about bagging my hops. So I think I'm just gonna dump this uh, only hop addition, it's just this one ounce of Willamette. Uh, I'm just gonna dump it straight in and uh, we'll go from there. It's the only hop addition in the entire brew. Um, very simple brew day for sure. So uh, we'll come back in about 50 minutes and uh, then we'll add our chiller and yeast nutrient and stuff like that. So we'll let this sit for 50 minutes. So our pre-boil OG sample is still a bit warm right now. It's about 90 degrees. Uh, so it's reading about 1.032 going to add two points to that and call it 1.034. Okay, so uh, we're now 10 minutes from the end of the boil, so it's time to uh, add our chiller so that we can start sanitizing that, and then I'm going to add some yeast nutrient. Okay, so we've reached the end of our boil. Time to shut everything off and uh, we'll start the cooling process.
Okay, well, brew was uh, exceptionally easy today. <laughs> Seriously, there was not much about that. Uh, one hop addition, a very simple grain bill, pretty standard uh, brew day, all things considered. So that part was really nice. Well, the post-brew part of this is where it gets slightly more complicated. So we're gonna be looking at uh, adding some adjuncts in the secondary phase of fermentation. So after this is cooled down, we're gonna pinch our yeast, we're gonna ferment as normal. So once we complete the first, the primary stage of fermentation, and the crossing has fallen and most activity has finished, that's gonna be somewhere around seven to 10 days, we're gonna take uh, three pounds of blueberry puree, which is uh, on its way now. Uh, it's in the mail somewhere. It's basically concentrated blueberry stuff. It's made from the real fruit, um, and it's basically just going to give us a really good flavor uh, from the blueberry, but also it'll have a little bit of sugar. It's gonna ferment it down a little bit further, um, but it's gonna give us a good color and hopefully a good blueberry character. Now, I've never actually brewed a fruit beer before, but nearly every single resource I can find has advocated for uh, adding the fruit flavor in with this method using puree. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, Hopefully it works. Anyway, we're gonna, once the primary fermentation is complete, we're gonna rack uh, into a secondary fermenter and rack it on top of the actual blueberry pur uh, puree. Now, given that that's a lot of sugar in that, that's gonna kind of restart fermentation. It's going to become active again, um, and it'll probably ferment through that pretty fast, I would hope. Um, once activity is finished in that, probably let it sit for a couple days, and then uh, we'll go ahead and keg and we'll see how it works. All right, so our original gravity sample is still kind of a bit warm. It's about 80 degrees. So we're adding about two points uh, to the measured gravity here, which is 1.043. Um, so we're gonna call it 1.045 uh, for our original gravity. By the morning, hopefully it'll be closer to our ideal temperature of like 65. Uh, and we'll pitch our yeast tomorrow morning. Should be fine. Anyway, I'm gonna aerate my splashing right now. Okay, so today is the day that we're gonna add the blueberry puree, all three pounds of it, uh, to a secondary fermentation and get this wheat beer transferred over. So right now, this is the color of the wheat beer uh, prior to any adjuncts being in it. Just a nice pale gold wheat beer. It's very simple. So the gravity right now is 1.012, um, which Makes me believe the fermentation is pretty much complete. The crossing has fallen. It's only been a week, so it is still a bit young. Uh, but fermentation will definitely kick back off once we add this blueberry puree. Right now, the flavor is really nice and gentle. A little bit of kind of like bread crusty, pie crusty kind of um, smoothness to it. Really nice mouthfeel. Mm. All around, yeah really very simple base to it um, but definitely a very delicious beer as it is right now uh, nothing interesting about it but that's what the blueberries are for uh, but overall not a bad base um, so I think it's definitely ready to add the fruit I'm definitely interested to see how the color changes and how the flavor ends up after this so stay tuned all right so here I have three pounds of uh, blueberry puree okay so this is actually made for uh, beer and wine making specifically so it's been commercially sterilized um, so the only thing we need to be sure of is that the can itself is sterilized think of it like a, a package of yeast right so we're gonna go ahead and sanitize the top portion of the, uh, the can and we're gonna open um, this is obviously a sanitized secondary fermenter and I have sanitized can opener here so we'll go ahead and open this up so here it is it's basically just like a syrup kind of uh, pretty watery though. Um, smells really good. And then, um, yeah, we're just gonna basically dump this into the fermenter before we rack the beer.
I'm gonna get an idea of how strong this is. That's actually, um, that's pretty tasty. <laughs> it's kind of like a blueberry spread or a blueberry jam. Okay, from here on out, we're just gonna rack the beer right on top of this uh, as gently as possible so as not to accidentally introduce oxygen into the mixture. So I've had the blueberry wheat on the blueberry puree for about four or five days now and uh, it's completely fermented through all the sugars that were in that. So the gravity right now is uh, sitting at about 10-10. Um, now keep in mind we had added a lot of sugars for that so I really have no real idea of how much alcohol is actually in this. Um, so like based on conventional calculations of original gravity to final gravity we'd have about four and a half ish percent right now but we added a whole lot of sugar so I don't really know um, but I'm just gonna kind of ballpark it and say that it's probably about 5% ABV so I think this is good it tastes pretty nicely it's, it's somewhat tart uh, at the moment but we're gonna put this on gas pretty soon and uh, get it carved up and ready to serve okay so fermentation of this beer went pretty well all things considered as you saw we added the blueberry puree and uh, there was a whole second fermentation it generated a brand new krausen and dramatically changed the color of the beer i think that whole process took about three days for the active fermentation and then i let it sit for another four or five days so i think i had about a week's worth of time on the blueberries um, just absorbing flavor and getting nice then, as you saw, we recorded our final gravity, and uh, then I kegged that and let it sit for two-ish weeks on gas, naturally carbonated. Pretty pleased with the results, but one thing I should definitely point out to you is that I don't have a clear idea of what the actual alcohol content of this beer is. So, the base beer itself was going to be around 4.5 or 4.7 percent, I think. Um, but adding the three pounds of sugar heavy puree definitely does bump that content up a bit. However, granted we added that to five gallons of liquid. Um, I think it came with an estimated gravity of the syrup itself. Uh, so I think it was about 1048 um, for three pounds of it. And I, if my math works out, it's somewhere around that, that adds like something like half a percent to 1% alcohol to our overall beer. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to be too overly concerned about science and specifics with this, um, so I just kind of ballparked it at about 5% ABV because that's what it is. All right, it's called Project X number two. It is uh, around 5% ABV as I told you earlier and it comes in about 20 IBUs. All right, so uh, appearances wise, starting off we've got a very nice fluffy head, um, thank you wheat malt. It uh, pours pretty strong thanks to me turning up the gas a bit, but uh, the head retention is awesome. Sticks around forever. Thank you, wheat malt, once again. Um, Color-wise, well, it's not super appetizing to look at. It looks kind of like a weird brownish kind of like brownish, orangish. I mean, it's really not an appetizing looking color at all. Uh, so it's not great. <laughs> Clarity is not there. It is a wheat beer. It is not supposed to be clear, so we're still fine with that. Aroma has pretty strong uh, whiff of just tart blueberry. A um, little bit of, yeah, a little bit of the wheat malt coming through. A um, little bit of kind of, um, not like a Hefeweizen style wheat. Um, there's no yeast esters coming through. It's just kind of like a, you get a little bit of blueberry and uh, kind of a, a whiff of, of a little bit of bread. Hmm. Mm. The mouthfeel of this thing is just super velvety, smooth, soft, squishy. I love it. Um, 
It's uh, it's like a medium to medium full body beer, um, but it's a very, very soft, palatable malt uh, mouthfeel. This is a very, very soft mouthfeel that I really, really enjoy. All right, and finally, flavor. So the first thing uh, is actually an immediate tartness. So because it's a fruit and it's full of simple sugars, the yeast are going to ferment out all those simple sugars, leaving the tart part of the fruit behind. Uh, it's not an immediately sweet beer because of that. It has a little bit of tartness, but it's not very aggressive at all. The nice thing about this, and the reason why so many fruit beers are wheat beers, is because the wheat malt um, actually has kind of this residual pie crusty kind of characteristic to it. So this has not only velvety softness and very, very nice smooth mouthfeel, uh, it's paired with a very, very nicely balanced set of flavors. And the tartness of the blueberries fades into a very nice, full, uh, satisfying, pie crusty, really kind of uh, characteristic from the wheat malt, which makes this almost a little bit like blueberry pie in a glass. On top of that, it is extremely drinkable, not very heavy, not very high in alcohol content. Um, it's very refreshing. No yeast flavor at all coming through, which is a good thing. Um, that was not the point of this beer. Uh, I'm not really picking up on any sort of esters or phenols coming out, um, which is good. It means our fermentation was done at the proper rate, at the proper temperature. Uh, nothing is really overpowering in this beer. There's no hop flavor, um, <laughs> which is good. And there's no hop aroma. But the whole point of this was to showcase the blueberry flavor and see what we could do with this fruit beer. Um, so, you know, it's definitely not without its drawbacks for sure. Most obviously the color kind of is not great. Um, this would be one where I would be tempted to toss in a little food coloring to see what that would do. Maybe like a little blue or a little, you know, yeah, like a little blue would be interesting. <laughs> It would probably just make this dark uh, and look black. It would be maybe a little blue, maybe a little red. Um, in the right light, this will actually look somewhat like a dark red. Um, but now in, in normal light, I don't think so. It's more of like a yeah, dark brown, copperish, goldish, orangish thing. <laughs> um, I could also go for maybe a little less tartness up front, uh, but that may actually fade with time because it was even more tart earlier, um, like a couple weeks ago. So, uh, and it's been in the keg, actually, I should say, for a couple weeks. Um, so it has had some time to age uh, and develop a little more flavor. Um, other than that, it's really pretty hard to find flaws with this, unless you're looking for a very sweet beer. But it's very difficult to get very sweet fruit beer without using um, any sort of artificial ingredients in there, which I really didn't feel like I wanted to do. The person that requested that I brew this beer loves it, so I consider it definitely a win. And I like it too, it's actually like a really nice kind of end of summer beer. Definitely recommend brewing this one. I could see this beer base working very well with any set of fruits, uh, assuming that you use the fruit puree method. Um, just be prepared for slightly tartar results than you might be thinking of, but uh, understand that that is actually a very enjoyable thing. If you give it a little time and you know you have enough malt character in the background to balance it out. Don't go overboard on the fruit, trust me. I would definitely uh, look into brewing fruit beers like this again with different fruits. Maybe apple would be pretty good, that'd be interesting. Um, just to play around with it, it's definitely a fun little experiment. So thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you liked it, go ahead and give that a thumbs up. Helps my channel become a lot more relevant to the YouTube community. If you enjoy watching these kinds of videos and watching me brew and learning more about beer, please hit that subscribe button. If you do hit it, hit that notification bell icon in there too so you can be the first to be notified when I upload a new video. To my current subscribers, thank you. You guys are always awesome about commenting and uh, sharing your thoughts and everything. Speaking of which, if you, subscriber or not, uh, find something really interesting about this video or you just want to share your thoughts on it, so long as it's civil, feel free to drop that down in the comment section below because that also is great to have some discussion and discourse within the brewing community here on YouTube. So I try my best to upload a new video every few weeks, um, but sometimes life gets in the way and brewing gets stopped for a bit. 
Uh, but if you want to see more frequent updates about what's going on in my brewing life, please feel free to follow me on Instagram. It is at the apartment brewer, um, where I tend to post more frequently about what brews are coming up and, uh, you know, eventually will make their way over here to YouTube. Uh, but you'll be able to see what's going on well ahead of schedule over there. And last but not least, if you turn your attention to the description, you'll see a compiled list of my brewing equipment as well as the recipe for this brew. If you are interested in buying the components on Amazon, I've provided links there for you. Just be aware that if you do click on those links and choose to buy something, my channel, at no additional cost to you, receives a very small commission. Uh, rest assured that that money does go right back into brewing and the channel, so it's not gonna get wasted. But thank you for your support if you do choose to purchase something. Thank you for sticking around, and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers.